Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to MSP lecture series on main group chemistry. In my previous lecture, uh, I was discussing about the utility of magnesium oxide as refractory material. Today let me continue uh, discussing the utility of uh, main group elements and their compounds. Let me first consider calcium chloride. Okay, calcium chloride is used in cold countries for de-icing and dust control. To maintain very effective de-icing uh, at a temperature as low as 222 Kelvin or minus 51 degree centigrade, one can use conveniently calcium chloride. And also the other important use of calcium chloride is in dust control. In cold countries, approximately, especially in United States of America and Canada, uh, approximately 30 percent of the calcium chloride manufactured is used for de-icing of roads and public walkways and sometimes it is also mixed with a small quantity of sodium chloride. Anhydrous calcium chloride takes up water in an exothermic manner. The heat evolved uh, during hydration melts surrounding ice and is sufficient to maintain effective de-icing action at temperature as low as minus 51 degree centigrade. And the second major application of calcium chloride is in dust control. Again, this application relies on the ability of anhydrous calcium chloride to absorb water this time from atmosphere. So, addition of anhydrous calcium chloride to dry road surfaces and hard shoulders provides a means of trapping water helping to aggregate the dust particles. So, now let us look into other utilities. Let us consider gypsum plasters. In fact, gypsum has a long history. The earliest known use of gypsum plaster was in Anatolia uh, that is a part of Turkey and Syria in about 6000 BC and in about 3700 BC Egyptians used gypsum plaster inside the pyramids. At present, the building industry is the major consumer of gypsum plaster and gypsum is nothing but calcium sulphate 2H2O. It is mined on a large scale worldwide and it is calcined to form beta hemihydrate. That means essentially when you take calcium sulphate 2H2O that is gypsum and if you heat it to 150 degree centigrade, it forms a hemihydrate having half equivalent of water. So, that is gypsum. So, here this gives Okay. So, of course, plus 3 by 2 water comes out. So, this is called plaster of Paris. So, hydration of the hemihydrate with a carefully controlled amount of water initially gives a slurry which hardens as calcium sulphate 2 H2O again. That means, you this one uh, has a affinity for taking water to go back to gypsum form. So, this is what is being exploited in making a slurry and molding it to required shape. Uh, crystals are needle like and it is their inner growth or inter growth that provides gypsum with its strength and suitability for the building trade. Calcined gypsum which is stored for the rehydration process. So, that means calcined gypsum, uh, the plaster of Paris, it has to be kept away from moisture as it is highly hygroscopic. The setting process of gypsum plaster 
may be accelerated or slowed down by a suitable additive. So, in this case essentially one can add up to 0.1 percent of citric acid. that is sufficient to retard the crystallization process or slow down the crystallization process. Gypsum plasters suitable for applying to walls have been developed so that additives are already present with the hemihydrate. Okay. So, building contractors commonly use free fabricated gypsum plaster boards and tiles and plaster boards are fabricated by pouring a hemihydrate water additive slurry onto cardboard sheets of approximately 0.5 mm thickness. After completing the lamination by applying a second sheet of cardboard, the plaster board is dried and it can be used for further uh, application in residential construction and other aspects. The incorporation of fiberglass into plaster boards is also possible giving fiber board products an advantage of gypsum plaster boards as partition walls is essentially due to their very effective fire resistance. In 2000, uh, 108 megatons of gypsum was produced worldwide and it was almost 1000 metric ton in 2016 that indicates the extensive use of this plaster boards in construction within the US itself okay, in 2022.9 metric tons of prefabricated gypsum products were sold or used and this is how plaster of Paris that is uh, calcium sulphate hemihydrate looks like and from this one with proper uh, methodology one can make into small uh, tiles or one can also make uh, sheets of this type uh, and they can be used as partition walls. The major utility of this one comes because of their resistance for temperature. And of course, besides this many of this uh, group 2 elements and their compounds are used as agents for drying or pre-drying solvents, organic solvents, uh, drying agents that react irreversibly with water, uh, drying agents for use in desiccators and drying tubes. That means, here uh, we come across two types of drying agents, some of them react reversibly with water and some of them react irreversibly with water. And those which are reacting reversibly with water can be used in desiccators and drying tubes, so that we can reuse them after uh, removal of water by heating to higher temperature. Okay. And let us look into both drying and pre-drying solvents. Typically anhydrous salts that absorb water as solvate are suitable for removing water from solvents. In organic solvents if we have moisture is there in order to distill and make pure anhydrous okay, dry solvents one has to use some of these water absorbing materials or drying agents. So, here this comes very handy, anhydrous salts such as magnesium sulphate, calcium chloride, calcium sulphate, sodium sulphate and potassium carbonate are hygroscopic. So, among these calcium sulphate and magnesium sulphate are particularly efficient and can be used as inert drying agents. And drying agents that react irreversibly with water are for example, uh, calcium hydride and as such sodium lithium aluminum hydride. So, you cannot recover them because they uh, react with water to give some other product. Uh, already you know what is going to happen when you treat calcium with water or calcium hydride with water. If trace amount of uh, moisture is there conveniently sodium or calcium can be used. Sodium essentially used as a wire is extremely efficient because of larger surface for removal of water from hydrocarbons or ethers, but reacts with for example, alcohols and certainly it is not suitable for drying halogenated organic solvents. One should not use in drying halogenated or chlorinated organic solvents. So, some of the compounds are also used as uh, uh, drying agents in desiccators and drying tubes. Uh, which are uh, calcium chloride, calcium sulphate, uh, potassium hydroxide and phosphorus pentoxide. The gases may be dried by a passage of 
okay, the gas to be purified or dried through drying tubes packed with some of these uh, reagents in the form of pellets. Uh, but possible reaction of the gas with the drying agent must be considered. So, when we are passing some gas for drying, we should ensure that the gas which is reacting with any of this should not be used. Okay. So, then there we have to use some other uh, drying agents. Although P2O5 phosphorus pentoxide is a common choice for use in desiccators, reaction with water results in the formation of a brown viscous layer on the surface of anhydrous powder. So, that essentially curtails uh, its uh, dehydrating ability and also sometimes what happens it uh, because of this thick layer of uh, uh, viscous uh, moss that is generated uh, inside still active P2O5 is there. One has to be extremely careful while disposing because P2O5 can violently react with water uh, to form uh, phosphoric acid. Uh, I would be giving you more details while discussing uh, chemistry of group 15 elements. And of course, in firework and flares uh, uh, alkaline earth metals are used and fireworks use exothermic reactions to produce heat, light and sound. Common oxidants are nitrates and perchlorates which essentially decompose when heating to liberate oxygen. And special effects such as colors, flashes, smoke and noises are provided by additives to the firework mixture. The group 2 elements are used in fireworks to provide color. We know they give characteristic uh, color. Barium compounds are added to fireworks to produce green flames, apple green flames. The species responsible for the color is essentially BaCl plus, okay, which is produced when Ba2 plus ion combines with Cl minus. Okay. The Cl minus ions are produced during decomposition of perchlorate oxidant or during combustion of the PVC fuel, polyvinyl chloride fuel. So, here KClO4 solid gives KCl plus 2O2 and KCl gives K plus plus Cl minus Ba2 plus gives plus Cl minus gives BaCl minus BaCl plus okay. and also in, in some cases barium chlorate is also used, barium chlorate is uh, BaClO3 2 minus okay. in, 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 in place of potassium perchlorate. Okay. So, this is about the application of uh, uh, alkaline earth metals in uh, fireworks. Okay. Similarly, strontium nitrate and carbonate are used to produce red color on formation of strontium. If you want to give red color, one should uh, use strontium and essential here uh, similar to that one uh, barium chloride. So, it forms uh, strontium chloride plus strontium chloride and perchlorate are effective in producing red color. Magnesium is also added to firework and flares to maximize the light output. Since magnesium produces an intense white light, illumination is increased by the incandescence of high temperature magnesium oxide particles produced in the oxidation reaction. That means here whatever the oxygen that is produced in an exothermic reaction can react with magnesium to form a magnesium oxide that is also highly exothermic that gives white light. So, let us look into uh, some questions on uh, main group elements and their compounds. Uh, I have given a question here, you can read it. A group 2 metal M dissolves in liquid ammonia, okay. uh, a group 2 metal M dissolves in liquid ammonia yeah, uh, to form a compound A. Okay. A slowly decomposes to B 
with the liberation of uh, 3 plus C a gas gas and metal M gives crimson flame test. If you do flame test it gives crimson color. Okay. So, now suggest identify M, A, B and C. Let me read out the question again. A group 2 metal M dissolves in liquid ammonia and from the solution compound A can be isolated. A slowly decomposes to B with liberation of NH3 and a gas C metal M gives a crimson flame test through blue glass. The flame appears pale purple. Suggest identities for M, A, B and C that means find out M, A, B and C. Okay. So, let us uh, solve this one. It is a very simple question. Of course, by looking to the flame test one should be able to tell what it is. First uh, let us write M. So, when you put ammonia, liquid ammonia, uh, it should form because this is from group 2. So, this let us consider this as A. Okay. So, A slowly decomposes uh, to B plus ammonia plus gas comes. So, here it is M N H 2 twice okay, plus 4 N H 3 and plus H 2. Okay. So, here this is similar to sodium amide in A N H 2 here divalent. So, M N H 2 plus 2 will come. Uh, so, here uh, of course, flame test clearly indicates that this is strontium. So, M is strontium and this is the complex. Complex will be A is hexamine strontium complex. Two plus, two plus, and then uh, B is this amide complex, neutral compound, because NH two minus is there, and C is obviously hydrogen. Okay, so this is the answer for this question. So uh, there is one more question, very similar one. Group two metal occurs group 2 metal X occurs naturally in great abundance as the carbonate. Metal X reacts with cold water forming compound D which is a strong base. Aqueous solution of D is used in qualitative test for carbon dioxide. X combines with hydrogen to give a saline hydride that is used as a drying agent. So, identify X and D. We should find out what is X, what is the group 2 metal and what is D. Okay. So, uh, let us consider this is X CO 3. Okay. We have to find out what is X, it is an alkali metal. So, uh, X plus H 2 O initially gives X O plus H 2 and of course, X O with uh, another molecule of water it forms hydroxide. Okay. And this hydroxide reacts with CO2 to gives XCO3 back plus H2O. Okay. So, X plus H2 gives XH2. Okay. So, it is completed now. Obviously, this is X is calcium here. Okay. X is calcium and uh, D is this one D, D calcium hydroxide. Okay. So, this is the answer for this question. So, let us look into a couple of more questions here. I have given a list of uh, alkaline earth metal salts, various salts. Okay. Which of the following compounds are sparingly soluble in water, which are soluble without reaction and which react with water, barium sulphate, calcium oxide, magnesium carbonate, magnesium hydroxide, strontium hydride, 
beryllium chloride, magnesium perchlorate, calcium fluoride, barium chloride and calcium nitrate. The next one is for the compounds that react with water, what are the products formed? If at all if they are reacting with water, you have to write the product that means using a balanced chemical equation represent that one, the interaction of those salts with water. Okay. Uh, so, here one can simply say sparingly soluble or insoluble ones are sparingly soluble ones are essentially heavier alkaline earth metal salts BSO4, magnesium carbonate, magnesium hydroxide and calcium fluoride. Okay. Soluble no reaction, some of them are soluble, but they do not react, they will simply uh, ionize or they form aqua compound, coordination compounds or BeCl2. So, it forms hexa aqua, this forms uh, beryllium forms tetra aqua uh, compound, magnesium also forms tetra aqua compound, barium chloride is insoluble, this also forms and similarly calcium nitrate they form the corresponding aqua complexes. Okay. In these cases you will get uh, hexa aqua compounds okay. and those which react with water uh, calcium oxide of course when calcium oxide reacts with water the product expected is calcium hydroxide and strontium hydride uh, when reacts with water it gives strontium hydroxide as well. So, so essentially one can answer in this fashion. Look into a couple of more questions I have given here. Suggest a structure for a dimer of beryllium chloride and explain how its formation illustrates beryllium chloride acting as a Lewis acid. I had already explained this one while discussing beryllium hydride structure. It has a one dimensional polymeric structure prior to the formation of BuCl2. What it does is it promotes one of the electron to the p orbital and undergoes sp3 hybridization to form 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals okay, with 2 sp3 hybrid orbitals having one electron each and there will be two sp3 having no electron, simply one I will show here like this, one electron here and he two no electron okay. and this will combine with chlorine uh, P S to P5. So, it forms now Cl, Cl and now we have empty ones and another one comes here, it arranges in this fashion, okay, it continues like this. So, here now this lone pair is given donated here, so it forms now so it continues like this. So, it continues like this. So, now basically what happens this one if we consider this portion it acts as a Lewis base okay, and this is electron deficient this acts as Lewis acid that means there is a mutual uh, one portion the, this one BeCl bond acts as Lewis base whereas Be with the sp3 having no electron acts as Lewis base and so through this process what we get is one dimensional chain like structure. So, okay, there is one more question here, reaction of a magnesium carbide with water gives propane. Okay. Suggest a formulation of the carbide and give an example of a common gaseous molecule with which the carbide ion is isoelectronic. That means, a, a, a magnesium carbide with water gives propane. So, uh, the, the formation of propane indicates that the carbide should have 3 carbon atoms. Okay. So, that is the clue you get it. Once you have the clue, simply balance the charge and write consider a suitable composition. 
So, that means if it is giving propane they should be C 3 and in order to balance this one, one should go for this one Mg to C, C 3. So, that you can also write it and see whether this is balanced or not. Okay. So, now if you see the valency of all of them are balanced this 2 plus this 2 plus all are 4 minus. So, it is taken care. So, now let me write like this here Mg 2 C 3 plus water. Okay. So, when water is added here one can get a compound like uh, CH 3 C C H. Okay, so, this is taken care with the two equivalents of water and then plus 2 MgO. Okay, yes. So, this is the answer for this one. So, that what we get is uh, 1 propyne, answer is 1 propyne. So, why does the solubility of alkaline earth metal hydroxides in water increases down the group? The size of anions being much larger compared to cations the size of anions being much larger compared to cations, the lattice enthalpy will remain almost constant within a particular group. Since the hydration enthalpy is decreased down the group, solubility will decrease as formed for alkaline earth metal carbonates and sulphates. But in case of hydroxides, it is a different uh, thing happens. Among alkaline earth metal hydroxides, the anion being common the cationic radius will influence the lattice enthalpy. Since lattice enthalpy decreases much more than the hydration enthalpy with increasing ion size, the obviously the solubility increases as we go down the group. So, let me summarize the chemistry of group 2 elements and plus 2 oxygen state dominates among uh, group 2 elements. All alkaline earth metals show low first and second ionization enthalpies but they are relatively more compared to group 1 alkali metals and are most electropositive elements in the periodic table. Beryllium 2 plus ion due to its smaller size and large uh, charge to size ratio form either covalent compounds or contain solvated ions and its chemistry is little different from the rest of the elements in group 2. Uh, group 2 metals form more stable coordination complexes compared to the group 1 metals and alkaline earth metals form basic oxide similar to alkali metals. Due to the smaller size of beryllium 2 plus, beryllium oxide is amphoteric and it behaves more or less very similar to aluminum oxide. So, with this I complete the chemistry of group 2 elements. In my next lecture, I will be discussing about the chemistry of B block elements. To begin with, I will consider group 13 elements. Until then, have a pleasant reading of inorganic chemistry. Thank you very much. Swayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.